Well, uh, Ian, thanks very much for sparing us some time here at SNEC. Uh, a quick question for you. Uh, we've obviously seen wafer quality improve quite significantly over the last couple of years. Uh, what's been the reasoning behind that? Okay, I think it's two things. I think in the first instance, there's been a lot of pressure from the market for cost to come through, cost reductions to come through right through the supply chain, and that's filtered down to the uh, wafer manufacturers. But the second reason has been the availability of some new technologies. Um, about three or four years ago, people started uh, doing cast mono wafering. That didn't quite work out, but there's been a, essentially an evolutionary ad adaption of uh, cast mono, which is a high performance multi wafer technology, which has really um, made some, enabled some really big uh, improvements in wafer quality. Uh, obviously, we, with, with that wafer quality improvement, we have seen a genuine uh, progressive increase in overall cell efficiencies. Yes. Uh, explain to me where the connections are between those two, because it seems to me quite a bit of those efficiency gains has come simply from the, the, the improved quality of the wafer. That's very true. I and mean, this is only for multi-crystalline wafers we're talking about, so the mono really hasn't had the same improvements. But uh, it's just about reducing the defects, and I'd say, roughly speaking, up to 60 or 70% of the efficiency gains uh, that we've seen on average across the industry can be attributed to the wafer quality over the last couple of years. When we're talking, you know, billions of wafers in numbers and, and the throughput requirements, what's going on that allows them to keep that quality high? Okay, well, I think there's two factors. One was obviously increased understanding about what features and material features in the actual wafers were reducing quality. So there's been a lot of understanding and advancements in how to reduce the defects that we, example, at BT Imaging, we can measure. Uh, the second factor has been a, a lower utilisation of the plants, which has meant they've been able to cast a lot slower, which has also helped bring down uh, the defect rate in, in, in silicon wafers. We're seeing higher utilisation rates. We're seeing the, the market potentially around 50 gigawatts this year. So the pressure's back on in uh, you know in higher utilization faster ramps uh, you know how can how are they going to be able to control that quality cons you know consistency of that newer higher quality levels they've been able to achieve it's going to be one of the challenges i mean the cell makers are now very very interested in technologies which can guarantee the quality of the wafers the efficiency quality of the wafers um, you know they're working with companies like vt imaging and some of our competitors to uh, try and get the wafer makers to adapt these, or adopt these new technologies. And it's all about measuring the defects. And uh, if you measure the defects in the wafers, you have a direct measure at the wafering factory, which then gives them the ability to optimize their processes for cost as well as performance. So I think there's a few, issue, a few ways it can go. I mean, for a start, they can uh, not use certain wafers because they really are too low quality. Uh, they can uh, charge different prices for different quality of wafers according to efficiency uh, expectations or entitlement. Each wafer has an entitlement, but that entitlement is subject to what the cell maker is going to do with it. So if you're running a standard crystalline silicon line or a high performance cell uh, design, you need a different wafer with different defect uh, qualities. And uh, depending on what you're doing, you might be prepared to pay more for a certain wafer quality than another wafer quality. Are we getting to a point where the quality side is now dictating that they need to invest in the type of technology that keeps that quality high? I believe so, and that's why we're in business. We think that closing the loop on the wafering factory is the most important thing that can happen in this part of the supply chain. Because it gives those companies not only quality assurance for the wafers they're selling, but a loop back to their manufacturing process in real time that enables them to optimise this quality versus cost issue uh, in a most optimum fashion. I think the last few years, there hasn't been a lot of new uh, capital expenditure in the wafering plants, apart from capacity. It's, uh, it's been using the same equipment in different ways. Um, but I think now is the time that some, particularly on inspection uh, and uh, yield efficiency management software, that there's gonna have to be some, some, some clever smarts to improve the, uh, the outcomes from those factories. All right. Well, Ian, thanks very much. Oh, thanks very much, sir.